Now, the holiday travel season is in full swing. We all know that. The airport officials are hoping to get through the next few weeks without scenes such as this one. All right. Remember the lovesick Chinese man who caused major disruptions at Newark Airport back in January after sneaking past a security checkpoint to kiss his girlfriend goodbye? Well, my next guest is working on technology that could help prevent those kinds of incidents. Here for CEO sit down is Craig Chambers. He's the head of Cernium. Craig Chambers, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Nice to be here. Thank you. Now, explain a little bit about Cernium and, and what you're doing, because I know that you've got a test case really going into the Dallas-Fort Worth airport is having to do with a, a contract that has been let out by the Transportation Safety Administration. Uh, Pim, this is actually the, the latest test of a technology that we've been working with for 10 years with various U.S. airports. Um, it uses computer vision. Instead of having to have people watch where everybody's walking, you can have a machine do it instead. Uh, the idea is that you can relieve the guards from the burden of having to watch everybody and make sure that incidents like Newark don't happen. Well, how does it work? How does a computer actually watch people as opposed to people watching people? Do they match up similar faces, similar descriptions? Uh, well, we actually look at, at shapes uh, and see what their patterns of movement are and uh, use some artificial intelligence to determine whether it's actually a person or some other interesting object and uh, look and see where it's going and then bring it to somebody's attention if they're going the wrong way or headed in the wrong place. All right, so tell us what is happening in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, Dallas is... Um, experimenting with something, or Dallas will be experimenting with something called uh, exit lane breach control, uh, which is uh, exactly the situation that happened in Newark. Uh, it looks for people who might be heading uh, in the wrong way, that is bypassing the checkpoint and going in where you should be going out. Uh, it's the same technology that we're taking into a lot of other parts of the security industry and even into the consumer world these days. Well, tell me about the consumer world, because I know that you're trying to branch out into that industry group. Well, um, we found that we could take that same technology that's, uh, that used to take a large bank of computers and put it onto a little chip that you could put inside of a camera. Uh, when you can do that, then you can make that same capability available to regular consumers, small business owners, and the like. So bringing the cost of security down, I would imagine. That, that's been the biggest challenge and one we've been able to conquer over the last several years is computing power got uh, a lot stronger and uh, the capability to put video into broadband systems and even onto mobile phones came about. What about having to train personnel in order to use these types of technology systems? One of the things that we were very careful about when we designed even the uh, TSA-based systems and that we put into the consumer electronics product uh, is how users interact with the system. And we've made it possible for everybody to handle them using just point-and-click technology. So you don't have to know anything about programming or computer or anything else. Uh, it's just checking boxes. How does this sort of square with the whole idea of profiling certain people or individuals that might be considered a threat? Would it be possible to program into the system certain characteristics that then the system would be able to look for sort of uh, almost like an algorithm scouring through the passengers that pass and before a camera? Uh, there, there is technology like that. Uh, that. That's not exactly what we do. We, we, uh, we like to say we don't care who you are, we just care what you're doing. Uh, so we, we don't identify individuals, but we do look for uh, certain types of, of motion that might indicate that there's a problem. What happens uh, after the test at Dallas-Fort Worth? Does the system go somewhere else? Uh, uh, Dallas is supposed to stay in place. Uh, there is a second system that's going to be going into Seattle-Tacoma Airport, and it's very similar to the technology that we've uh, put into several dozen other airports around the country with uh, individual security directors. Now, does the technology actually learn as it goes? In other words, does it create a database that is then something that you can learn from in the future? future? Uh, not in that case, although we, we do teach the algorithm to get better over time. Uh, our CTO likes to say it's about as smart as a two-year-old, uh, and we're trying to make it at least as smart as a three-year-old. And uh, in, in this process, what kind of money are we talking about to sort of get these systems in place? Well, the, the large airport systems cost tens of thousands of dollars. The, the uh, thing we've been able to do with the consumer product, though, is take that same technology and put it into uh, a little camera recorder that's the size of your fist uh, that uh, costs just a few hundred dollars and has all of that capability within it. So sort of grand scale uh, security, but in a small space and in a small price. Right. All right. I want to thank you very much, uh, Craig Chambers, uh, the chief executive of Cernium, sharing some insights into what's going on in the world of airport and commercial as well as individual security.